Hello and welcome. I'm Pastor Gene from Maranatha Baptist Church, coming to you from my home this morning. And I just want to say that uh, I really miss my in-residence class, but this is the best we can do as we will be seeing this one day short of the two-week sequester. So hopefully by next uh, Sunday, we'll be back to normal, uh, but we'll see. Listen daily to www maranathapeoria.org, and watch for updates on that. Please listen in every evening at 6 p.m. Arizona time for the Freedom from Anxiety seminar that Pastor Peter is putting on. It's excellent. It's ongoing. So if you tune in and have never seen any of the previous ones, you'll learn something new. If you'd like to go back and watch from the very beginning, we started two weeks ago at the beginning of the two-week sequester requested by the government. So we are here today to bring you information from uh, the next lesson, which is lesson 10 of the freedom class, and it's freedom from addiction, freedom from what the Bible calls those sins that so easily beset us. But before we get started today, I'd like to say welcome to my home. The last session I had was broadcast directly from the church office, I didn't realize, but my calendar and different things were on the wall behind me and not very impressive as far as decorations. Andrew Novak really upstaged all of us uh, when he did his offsite presentation in Prescott. And if you have not seen that, look for maranathapeoria.org and go to the junior church or children's program and watch some of Andrew's presentations with his family. They are excellent. Now, let me give you a quick overview of the office here. I'll just invite you into my home. And if you ever come by or we schedule counseling and it's done off-site away from the church, this is where it will be. My office is my counseling room. But I've been to Africa, to the north side of Africa in Egypt, and to the south side in the country of South Africa. So a lot of my personal belongings reflect that. Uh, there's my... Um, telescope that I use to watch the sides of the white tanks when I can't actually go up there and hike. And I'll just do a 360 around the room here, explain some things to you. We've Kelly and I have been to Egypt, to Jordan, to Israel. And so we have some artifacts and souvenirs from there. There's the couch that is Bella's favorite place to lay, especially when we're at church or not home. Some of the decorations in the office come from Egypt, uh, Egypt or Africa, and my little hanging light there comes from my Chinese website, which if you know me, you know I'm fond of. Here's my work desk, and it is my workstation. And from here, we'll be presenting the rest of the class today. So I appreciate uh, if you would just go get a note page, uh, something to write down your notes on, something to write, especially some Bible verses that I'll be uh, presenting today. Those are critical for the days ahead. Again, I want to iterate every week or reiterate that, and I'm being redundant when I say that, but uh, in, in 30 minutes, I can't teach anyone uh, freedom from their addiction. Unfortunately, sometimes addictions are years and decades in the making, sometimes a lifetime. And so if you stick with me uh, every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock is my normally scheduled uh, presentation time. And if you can stick with me for a few weeks or at least a few months, then you can make some raw headway in getting rid of those sins that so easily beset us. So let's go without further ado into a quick review of the slides. And last week we were talking about uh, the cycle that we go through. This week it's the persistence, persistence that pays off. And that's what we need to overcome our addiction. There is a 12 trigger cycle that is very self-evident in any addiction. It doesn't matter if you're addicted to pornography, to drugs, to alcohol, tobacco, or overeating. You go through the same trigger cycle every time you digress and go back to your addiction. This week, we're up to trigger number four, which is resistance. And the Bible promises us in the word of God that if we resist the devil, he will what? He will flee from us. And so that resistance is what we need on our part. Last week, we talked about trigger number three, which was 
triggers versus temptations. There are certain things that trigger us. That simply means we are aware of our surroundings. But then there's actually temptation. And we talked about the aisle in the grocery store as an example of that. The temptation itself is not the sin. When you look down the aisle and you see things that you could be tempted toward, that is not sin. However, giving into that, picking up that item, using or abusing the item, that becomes sin. And we looked at the verse, James chapter 1, verse 12, which says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive a crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. James chapter 1, verse 12. That's a good verse to cling to. Now this week, we're moving on to trigger number four, and that is resistance. There is a carnal way and a biblical way to resist. Remember, not all people who are addicted are Christians. And on the left side of your screen, you should see the little brown insert that says life is all about making choices. This is a very secular opinion here. Always do your best to make the right ones and always do your best to learn from the wrong ones. That's good advice, Christian or otherwise. We make bad decisions, and sometimes we can learn from those. But do your best to make the good decisions. And here's a quote from Oscar Wilde. I can resist anything except temptation. Ponder that for a second. I'd like to introduce you to a little friend of mine I learned when I was teaching middle school science in public school. He's called a tardigrade. And this little tardigrade is an animal that's nearly impossible to kill. When you think you've killed it, in fact, it may just be pausing and playing possum because it's laying eggs. It's commonly called the water bear, and they are the most resilient of all of God's creatures. They can survive in temperatures from negative 459 degrees Fahrenheit to positive 303 degrees Fahrenheit. Let me remind you that water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So those are super, super extremes. They can withstand a thousand times more radiation than any other animal. And they can live nearly 10 years with no water at all. They are God's lesson in persistence. Recently, they took the tardigrades up into space and on a space mission, they survived for 10 days in the vacuum of space. And when the astronauts thought they were dead, they had, in fact, actually laid eggs. On Earth, they, they live in mossy areas. And they, like our addictions, when we go to extremes to stop them, they not only come back, but they multiply. Now think of that. We as humans live very predictable patterns, and we can see these predicted patterns sometimes when we relapse. Sometimes we live in complacency, confusion, compromise, or catastrophe. And we look at reasons that are the cause of relapse, why we would go back to an old lifestyle as Christians with a testimony to regard Sometimes we revert to our own willpower. We think, ah, oh, I've got this. I don't need God. I can do it on my own. That's a lie of Satan. Sometimes we don't credit Christ in recovery. By the grace of God, I've been alcohol-free for over 16,700 days. I glorify that God is my rock, my fortress, and my strength in doing that. Why we recover with Without support, uh, we think we did it alone. Uh, we think that uh, we don't need anyone else. Spouses don't need one another for support. Again, those are all lies. We become prideful because we say that we have done this. Look at what I've accomplished. And these are very predictable patterns to relapse back into your addiction, if you're thinking that way. So today, we're going to look at uh, the outline. And again, you don't have this, so I'm going to read it, but here's where I need you to have your notes page ready for me, okay? Uh, I'm going to give you some verses. I'll quote some of the verses, but then some of them, I want you to write those down. 
Last week we were introduced to trigger number three, which was temptation. And I hope that what you've learned from that will enable you to go forward through temptation, not just to live your life trying to avoid temptation, not looking at those dark alleys, but never uh, daring to drive down one. The Apostle Paul said to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5, examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith, prove your own selves, know ye not your, I'm sorry, Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobates. That was Paul's challenge to the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Now, in the Old Testament, the prophet Jeremiah said in the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, verse 40, Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. So once we think that we have a handle on life, and things are going well, search our ways, self-examine, and then always turn back and give glory to the Lord. Reflecting on these verses may allow us to confess that our love for our addiction is more than our love for Jesus. When a Christian turns from focusing on God and back to, as Pastor Peter would say, worshiping those things that so easily beset us, it's a hard pill to swallow. But you've come through this and to an understanding. When the prophet Jeremiah explained the depraved heart and how the Lord sees us versus how we really are, Jeremiah said this in Jeremiah 7, uh, 17, verses 9 through 10. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. That's Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 9 and 10. So what is then biblical resistance? We know what human secular science or uh, doctors would tell you when you go to the doctor's office. Just be strong. Just buck up. Um, just put things behind you and leave them. And physically, we can try to do that. Mentally, we can try to do that. But often, we fall back. So Colossians, in the book of Colossians, Paul wrote in chapter 3, verse 5, Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Now, idolatry is your addiction. Anything that would turn you or for you to do before God, turn you from God or do before you turn to God. So here's the problem. We resist, and maybe for a long time, maybe days or weeks or months, but then we give in to sin. The immediate feeling when you reindulge is maybe great. Your pleasure is intensified. But not only that, your addiction level now starts off at the highest level it was when you quit. So if you turn back to it, you go back to it, not at that beginning stage, maybe years and years ago when you first started to experiment with a drug or first indulged in a sinful act, but your brain goes back to that highest level that it ever achieved and said, let's start here, and what we need is more. We need more of this. And you can fill in the blank there for your addiction. This is the result of resisting with human nature and not by God's design. To resist biblically, you need to spend time with God, putting him in your mind and on your mind in place of thoughts about addiction. Call it Tithing your time, giving just 10% of your time to God every day is a good start. That's 48 minutes. And with this time, maybe you can give it to prayer or before you start work, retreat into a quiet place and focus on God. A scripture challenge for when you get back from work, or it could be a craving time that you know you have every day. Keep your mind stayed upon God in the meanwhile. Don't just read God's word, but obey it. 
Start with Psalm 119. In the passage, uh, verses 9 through 16, it says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his ways? By taking heed thereof according to thy word. With thy whole heart have I sought thee. O let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in mine heart, and I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord. Teach me thy statutes. With thy lips I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. Of thy mouth I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies, and much in all riches. As much as in all riches. I will meditate on thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in the statutes, and I will not forget thy word. That's what David said in Psalm 119. Focus on the word of God and what it will do for your lives. Now let's break down that passage from verse 11 down to verse 16. I want you to turn to Psalm 119 right now, mark the passages, and then this is going to be your daily reading for this week. I'll give you six independent verses with some thoughts and see if you can add to them in your notes my thoughts. First of all, on verse 11, hide God's word in your heart means spending time with him and develop a relationship with him. It takes time for us to develop any relationship. It has taken time for you to develop your addiction. Now, gradually, you can get away from that time with the addiction, the focus on that thing that takes you away from God and focus on your relationship with God. Verse 12, come with an attitude of worship. When you set this special time every day, again, tithing of your time, you can break up the 48 minutes or you can do it all in one, um, almost an hour, three quarters of an hour. You can spend time with God, but come with an attitude of worship when you come to that time. Read God's word out loud because your ears are accustomed to your voice. And when you hear the word of God in your own voice, it can just reemphasize. It can just refocus your mind on God. Verse 14, come with an attitude of thankfulness. Come to God in a thankful and contrite heart. Tell him that you are thankful for the good things that he's done in your life, in you and through you. And then verse 15, think deeply and critically on God's word. This is the meditate part. Ask yourself questions, take notes, and challenge yourself. Do you really understand what you're reading when you go into the word of God? And then verse 16, actually enjoy the time, not rush through it. Don't make it a, a trite thing, but actually listen to God's word. Listen to your own verse, voice reading God's word and enjoy the time reflecting on it. I'd like you to read this passage, Psalm 119, verses 9 through 16, every day. And that's your homework assignment for this week. Take notes daily because God will show you something else in this little passage every day that you read his word. Think about the time, the energy, the finances, the investment that you have in your addiction. If you've come into the depths of an addiction, whether that's, again, drugs, pornography, you fill in the blank there of what that addiction is. You know that it's been a sequence of events that have gotten you there. And it needs to be a sequence of events of focusing on God and what God wants for you to get you out of that. So let's begin that this week. Let's pray and start our week off focused on God. God bless you.